Hello, my name is Pierre Bichon. I am a, um, a consulting engineer in uh, the Center of Excellence of Juniper Networks. And today I will talk about uh, disaggregation and virtualization, uh, and that is in a uh, mobile cloud architecture um, context. Um, since we will be talking about uh, the use of virtualization, especially in uh, mobile environments. And to do so, I will uh, talk about a few uh, trends and challenges, um, and then go through use cases and solutions, products that we offer and services, um, and, and finish with some proof points and, and uh, refer to the uh, Juniper mobile cloud architecture, um, uh, part of which uh, this uh, disaggregation and virtualization solution uh, is, um, is included. So, to talk about the background of all this and, and why we are talking about disaggregation and virtualization nowadays, uh, it's mainly because some uh, operators mainly have faced some challenges uh, to, uh, um, to revenue and cost uh, being uh, inflexible and, and be under, under pressure, uh, and also the complexity which is uh, increasing with the uh, different services which need to be run and need to be adapted to uh, more and more demanding customers. Um, in parallel to those trends, um, you have evolution of technology towards clouds, uh, towards more and more automation to face with this uh, growing complexity, uh, and uh, also the virtualization technologies which grow into this environment. And we are also seeing some, some trends in, in terms of uh, standards and mainly in terms of open innovation where the um, uh, computing uh, environment uh, is actually um, moving towards um, uh, openness, towards um, communities which work together to provide solutions. And, and this is an ideal way uh, to create um, a transformation um, to adapt more uh, rapidly to customer needs, to deliver new services with more agility and differentiation, and also still uh, enforcing a high degree of security, which is required nowadays, and continue to, per to, to have very good performance and, and scale. So this was the background, and, and uh, when we talk about uh, virtualization, we start with talking about disaggregation. And what it means is um, when, when you look um, uh, in the past, what we have done with uh, networking systems in general, um, they all rely on um, a system which need to talk to another system through protocols, through control plane, typically. And this needs to be interoperable because, um, you know, machines need to talk to machines and you need a language for that. Uh, but it was more or less the only, since the only thing that uh, was uh, open and could interoperate. The rest has been developed in, in a closed environment. What we think is that uh, in the future and moving forward, uh, everything in a system will be completely open and could be swapped more, um, even more. From the hardware uh, layer, um, the, the, the hardware will become uh, completely open and could be swapped by another hardware. The control plane remains uh, interoperable and remains uh, completely open. Um, the operating system could be changed as well, um, and, and that could create uh, a very flexible environment where an operating system could use uh, any, any kind of hardware. And then, in terms of operations the, and, and, and services, I mean, all the software stacks on top of the system could become also completely open and swappable. So this is uh, a very interesting way of looking at things. And if you consider uh, how systems will be built um, moving forward, that's what Juniper has been doing so far by creating this uh, disaggregation of software and hardware. What it means is that you can mix and match uh, hardware and software, um, including third-party software to run on Juniper hardware and vice versa. Uh, and you can have uh, all kinds of combinations uh, leveraging open source applications. If you look at how it is architected, uh, you have hardware platforms, which could be uh, in the form of Juniper ASICs, um, Merchant Silicons, um, uh, Intel x86 CPUs, or any other hardware. Uh, 
on top of which you have a, an operating system with virtualization uh, techniques and on top of that you have a, a, a virtualized control plane which will talk uh, to um, the, different, the, the different hardware and the software through APIs. And then you have uh, the, the, um, the packet forwarding engine that will uh, allow to move packets in and out. And also a, a component that will manage the, the system um, as a platform. And on this, this uh, software component, you may also have other um, virtual machines or other natively, um, native applications um, that will work on this system, all managed by uh, a, a manager of this virtual infrastructure. This software um, layer will interact with the upper applications through um, data models that are coming from the open config world uh, in order to be uh, fully managed by any kind of system in, in, a very, um, uh, in a very standard way. So this is draws um, uh, a framework for a disaggregation and opens the door to um, virtualizing uh, um, almost every, every, everything and, and allowing the differentiation between the hardware and the software in a very flexible manner. This could not be done with, uh, without having a, a very, very open uh, way to work with uh, different uh, systems and different companies, different solutions. Uh, and the openness of those virtualized solutions um, makes it possible to interact uh, with uh, many other systems. And that's what we have done by making sure that our um, virtualized solutions work with uh, VNF vendors, uh, such as Affirm that we see here, and we'll talk about that a bit later, uh, and also can integrate with orchestration systems to build clouds, um, and all being um, completely automated with uh, other automation systems and, and virtualization platforms as well. Uh, and that's what we, we are building as a strategic uh, um, value uh, to make sure that we interoperate with as many solutions as possible. Um, the other uh, um, uh, framework which is very important to create uh, a virtualized solution uh, is the cloud networking environment um, in, in, in which it will develop. So being, to, uh, being able to have uh, virtual network functions, what is important is that you can network them together. And this is what we have in Juniper as a solution uh, with Contrail uh, and, and the cloud assist, SDN system that we have um, to make sure that any um, VNF that we develop will be completely controlled by this um, SDN uh, infrastructure. And this Contrail cloud solution is actually an open source system um, that has been developed uh, using standards protocols to make sure that this can interoperate with existing physical networks, protocols like BGP, for example. Um, and this is completely uh, open with APIs so that it allows for automation, so being able to uh, be managed and, and participate into an automation, automation system um, that will, will uh, you know, interface with, with the control networking solution and still provide a very, very uh, carrier gate solution to be able to scale, uh, to have high performance, uh, and uh, being able to um, match uh, the requirements of uh, small to large service providers. The solution is based on um, a uh, virtual network uh, capability, which is called control networking. Um, that virtual networks is actually a, a virtual router which will sit into a compute node uh, under an, um, the, the standard uh, orchestration systems um, and provide the routing function of, of um, a virtual uh, platform. The uh, virtual network, virtual router system is also part of a bigger solution which is called the control cloud which includes the uh, control orchestration system uh, that works with, uh, with OpenStack and includes I and mean, manages uh, the, the virtual router of the control networking function.
And this is part of a more generic uh, architecture that we package as a control, control cloud reference architecture with, with uh, very, um, uh, very well-defined rules to deploy and manage an entire uh, cloud um, networking system. So this is a foundation, and the other mechanism that we uh, we provide to have a very good virtualization uh, technology uh, to be able to deploy efficiently is um, through the acquisition of a startup company uh, called AppFormix that is now part of Juniper, uh, which uh, allows operators to deploy uh, private clouds and, and, and public clouds together and optimize this infrastructure in real time with uh, a solution which is fully automated and leverage, leverages machine learning techniques to provide an uh, intent-driven solution. What it means is that you have, first of all, a, a, a visibility which is provided by looking at uh, the uh, Intel capabilities, and, and, and AppFormix is the only company to leverage those capabilities of the Intel processors to look at the latency, the response times, uh, all, all the, uh, the, the behavior of the VNFs um, into the Intel processor. And this provides real-time visibility of the applications, uh, of the physical or the virtual infrastructure and the services running on top of it. Having the visibility, you can uh, analyze what, what happens, uh, analyze the health of the system, make assessments of the risk and performance, and then make actions to uh, orchestrate in real time um, and create uh, uh, risk mitigation and enhance the performance via um, alarms and events that can be um, uh, enforced into, into the, the system itself. This actually allows a solution which is self-healing, self-pacing, and self-scaling, so fully, uh, full automation of a virtualized environment. We have customers and we have references uh, such as Rackspace or Viasat who are actually using this system and more and more um, uh, companies are deploying this system into data centers and also start to think about deploying that uh, further out in the network. So, based on all those technologies that I spoke about, uh, we can define a number of use cases for virtualized solutions. And I'm going to talk about three main use cases which come from uh, three different segments where Juniper is very active and leveraging our solutions that we developed over the years and now that we um, migrate to virtualized environments. The first one is security, and, and Juniper being a, a, a long-time security leader uh, for networking, uh, we have taken our technology based on the SRX uh, family and moved that to a virtualized environment. And what it means is that we have uh, uh, put under the um, SDN um, uh, environments, which I talked about, so the control, uh, controller, the orchestration system, uh, which manages uh, different compute nodes and different virtual networks through virtual routers, um, and uh, interconnect basically uh, networks together through rules that could be enforced by uh, firewall systems. Right. And by um, implementing a virtual firewall system, like a virtual SRX coming from the SRX family, or in a, in a Docker environment, a container-based SRX, we allow to, um, uh, to interconnect different uh, virtual networks together and still enforce security. And in a mobile environment, what it means is a function of LTE security gateway, um, GI firewall, uh, or GP firewall for roaming, those functions can be enforced within a data center or within a pop between virtual networks. Uh, also on the GI LAN to create uh, a chain of services which include virtual firewall capabilities. All this can be managed uh, in the uh, software-defined secure network uh, architecture that we have defined. And 
leverages the advanced threat prevention uh, that we have created as the uh, a leading edge um, security solutions which works in a fully automated way and can distribute the policy enforcement but still keep centralized the definition of poli security policies. To implement this, we have virtualized our SRX families, as I was saying previously, through the uh, virtual SRX products, which is um, a, a, um, a, a, a firewall that uh, comes with all the features developed in the SRX families, including um, the VPN technologies, NAT, firewall, um, analytics, and so on, um, with rich uh, firewall services like intrusion prevention, uh, unified threat management, and uh, implementing the sky um, uh, advanced threat prevention that I was mentioning previously. All those functions now in a virtualized platform running on some uh, x86 platform with a virtual environment um, based on virtual machines where the control plane is running on a virtual CPU and the forwarding plane of for forwarding packets and provide the security functions uh, is actually in a virtual CPU as well. The um, way we have defined it and developed it is through scaling with different virtual CPUs to achieve the highest performance on the market today with uh, a virtual uh, firewall um, running with at uh, 100 uh, gigabits per second uh, at, at a maximum. So this is outstanding performance that we can have on a virtualized system. And also, of course, I mean, the flexibility to scale down as well if you want to distribute and adapt the performance to the env environment that uh, you need. Going even further, we have developed a, uh, the, the, the uh, virtual SRX in a container-based uh, solution, and which is the, um, uh, the, the CSRX as the first containerized firewall in the market. And this uh, is basically taking the source code of the virtual SRX and migrate that into a container infrastructure and uh, leveraging um, all the functions, so um, layer 2 to layer 7 security systems, but now uh, into a container environment with a very small footprint uh, from more than 2 gigabytes of memory required for VSRX down to 100 megabytes of memory, and more importantly as well, um, the way to, uh, to very quickly boot an instance of a CRSRX in less than a second compared to uh, several minutes for a, a virtual machine-based environment. So that means you can have a, a huge elasticity to implement to scale massively uh, and very rapidly, and to provide agility in order to start a new um, uh, virtual firewall um, when you need it, at the time you need it, and in a very flexible manner. So a, a very different way of, um, of um, um, deploying security. Uh, and very complementary to a, a, a virtual machine in, uh, environment, which is much more stable over time, then with a, a, a container-based firewall, you can actually deploy very quickly um, uh, security where it needs to happen. Security being one, uh, one important use case, uh, we can now talk about the routing um, which is being virtualized. And what it means is to decouple the hardware um, uh, part of a router, and we took the um, flagship router of Juniper called the MX, and we have separated the software, disaggregated the software, to create a virtual MX solution. That virtual MX solution is actually based on, um, you know, the, 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 physical, um, the physical hardware, the physical uh, um, compute hardware, and then on top of which we have uh, a virtual machine which has the forwarding plane, which will use various techniques to forward packets through the, the, the physical uh, network interface cards, and also another virtual machine which implements, uh, implements the virtual control plane. And this makes the solution uh, 
coming from the the EMX family, so uh, full feature parity with the EMX, so it's a full-fledged router, um, very sophisticated and contains all all protocols and all the features that uh, MX has developed for years under Junos. Um, it is very elastic, very carrier grade, a lot of scaling capabilities. Um, the way it is packaged allows um, multiploid deployment options from low to high scale, um, and uh, you, you can deploy it with uh, different ways to um, to license um, uh, and to uh, and, and, and to be managed in terms of um, capacity. Um, it is very much. Um, uh, targeted through APIs to uh, provide uh, interfaces with third-party VNFs, and this allows for very good innovation, so you can include um, a virtual MX uh, into um, a virtualized uh, environment with different VNFs, and this can provide the, um, the routing functionalities uh, as if it was a, a physical router. Uh, and then it could also be deployed into a, f a cloud environment, and it is available in the uh, AWS marketplace, so that um, you can use it very, uh, very easily and very uh, efficiently. The performance is still uh, is uh, it, it is virtualized, but it, uh, performance is as outstanding uh, with uh, 100 gigabits uh, per CPU socket uh, of performance, which is uh, you know makes it very flexible to implement into many different use cases. And uh, to to illustrate uh, what usage uh, our customers uh, are doing with the VMX, and uh, you have here some examples, um, mainly around uh, the PE function uh, of the um, MX, which is uh, very rich, creating virtual PE solutions at layer 2 or layer 3 for VPN terminations. That's very useful and very much used. Um, also to distribute uh, the PE functions um, into um, smaller parts of the network or um, uh, more at the, uh, toward the access parts of the network. Um, also to um, develop uh, PE functions into a new um, market to test the, uh, or to deploy, start to deploy quickly uh, before deploying maybe a physical hardware for higher performance, then it's easy to deploy a virtual MX as a virtual PE function uh, to test uh, and, and to start. Uh, also, to um, to deploy virtual MX between an enterprise and the public cloud as a gateway because of the richness of the functions, um, and uh, also to I mean leveraging all the um, layer two, layer three, uh, and all the MPLS capabilities of the MX uh, software um, to create those uh, different um, uh, cloud interconnect uh, solutions. Um, one use case which is very, very interesting is uh, actually to, to emulate networks and to test networks, uh, so to create um, um, uh, virtualized networks before deploying them, and, and uh, virtual labs, for example. And this is also very uh, interesting to, uh, to leverage the, the virtual MX. The third solution, uh, sort of the use case that we can talk about uh, from Juniper is the um, virtual mobile packet core solution that we have developed along with Affirmed. And uh, Affirmed being a leading vendor into um, as a virtual EPC solution, um, this allows us to create uh, with our two companies a complete end-to-end -end solution, uh, which is uh, native for cloud deployments, uh, having high performance both in the EPC and the uh, networking solution, uh, scalable, automated, um, contains um, uh, open technologies so that you can inter interface with and integrate that with other systems and is fully uh, in line with the deployments of um, 5G solutions moving forward and now uh, very uh, well suited for IoT deployments. The way it works is that under a control cloud infrastructure, we have an affirmed MCC as a virtual EPC running as virtual machine, and you have also uh, the security part of the solution, which is implemented as a virtual SRX or container-based SRX. 
And so this is actually this solution embedded into uh, Contrail, um, interconnected with the routers. This can be complemented to uh, interface with the rest of the network with a VMX as a virtual PE to interconnect um, APNs, for example, uh, or uh, in, be deployed in a low-scale environment, uh, even uh, with um, a, an NFX as a, as a universal CP solution uh, to uh, interconnect the enterprise sites to the um, uh, mobile packet core sites. Okay. So this is a very interesting solution where you, ha you can deploy the um, uh, virtual uh, EPC for large sites with a lot, a lot of uh, scale for, let's say, IoT solutions, millions of uh, sessions. Uh, and also you can distribute this further out into the network so to adapt to um, uh, local um, regions where you have islands of connections uh, and even deploy that as um, enterprise solutions or enterprise specific solutions. Um, this could also be used for um, very flexibly for um, MVNOs for example. The solution is actually completely well packaged for uh, having network slicing in mind because of its full integration with um, uh, with the VMX and uh, and and also the uh, the control uh, V router uh, in order to create um, a good um, uh, good interconnect between networks. So. Um, Having said that and described the three use cases that we, Juniper, can offer as um, platforms and solutions, what is critical in a virtualized world is how you actually deploy it and the relative complexity to deploy it because now you need to interface with different systems and you have now a separation between the hardware, which could be generic and could be uh, coming from different vendors and the software, which is a, a new way to deploy um, network functionalities. Um, we as Juniper uh, can offer our customers to participate and help in the uh, planning of those deployments, uh, the deployment itself and the operations later through um, support services, of course, uh, dedicated to this virtual environment, but also uh, to provide a good planning and start well uh, to, uh, uh, to have very professional services to do things like uh, VNF onboarding, uh, um, managing uh, the life cycles of the services, uh, to have uh, um, design uh, services, uh, deployment services for OpenStack, Control Cloud, and uh, virtualized SRX architectures. So this combining everything and um, uh, making sure that this is designed properly and being deployed properly. Uh, and also having um, uh, security services, security assessments, um, uh, VNF, security VNF testing before it, it is deployed. Uh, all this could be, um, you know, um, created and managed by our uh, professional services engineers. Um, Juniper education and training is also very key because this is a new world that um, many of our customers needs uh, education, it needs good training, and this can be done uh, through the Juniper um, education uh, services. As solutions for virtualization disaggregation, we have um, a number of proof points over time that we we have uh, we have seen from our customers and from the market in general. Um, we have been recognized as as a pioneer for this uh, virtualization and disaggregation uh, technologies, um, being the the first uh, vendor to disaggregate uh, Junos um, as a software. Um, also, a, a leader um, to have uh, open uh, um, uh, orchestration and management platforms for uh, you know many VNFs uh, interoperating with with Juniper. Um, so we have a, a good ecosystem now, and we are improving that uh, every day. Uh, we are perceived as a very flexible solution. 
uh, also have uh, excellent um, uh, firewalling capabilities and routing capabilities now in a virtualized, virtualized, uh, in a virtualized world so that virtualization can be deployed um, very efficiently. And you can see some of our customers uh, and uh, and uh, and the press as well recognizing that uh, we are actually um, uh, leading in that in that market. Now, having said that, this is only one aspect uh, of a uh, more global uh, mobile cloud architecture. Uh, that Juniper provides, uh, but this is a fundamental uh, uh, component because it allows to bridge the gap between the hardware solutions and the pure software solutions. Uh, and this is actually um, uh, here uh, explained, I mean, or, or summarized here um, as a disaggregation and virtualized solution using VSRX, the container-based SRX, the virtual MX, um, and uh, the third-party VNFs, which are integrated with, with Contrail, one of it uh, being um, uh, the uh, virtual APC with a firm that uh, I talked about I talked about earlier. And if you want to look at the more global solution, I encourage you to look at other presentations that uh, uh, talk about this mobile cloud architecture detailing the other components like the uh, automated control and orchestration, security everywhere, distributed data center, and integrated packets and optical and timing solutions. And having said that, I thank you for your attention.